name's Clayton Bagwell, and I'm going to be tag teaming with Michelle Stoggins. We're from the Business and Operations and Support Group, basically uh, accounts and allocation support. Uh, so we're going to talk about those two topics today. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, to these two different types of accounts, uh, basically user accounts and allocation accounts. Um, so just to give you a little definition, uh, so um, a user account is your personal private account it's, uh, associated with your login name or username. Uh, it provides authentication, which is your personal identity, and then authorization, which is what you are allowed to access. Uh, you can request an account um, on your own. Uh, we have a special web page for doing that. Or your project's principal investigator or project manager can send you a link to request an account. Um, since this is a user training, we're assuming that all of you probably already have your own user account. Um, but uh, we can always help you with questions if you don't. Uh, there's five primary types of roles for users um, in our system, which is the principal investigator, uh, the PI proxy, which is somebody who can do things for the PI, basically kind of like uh, their right-hand assistant. Uh, we have project membership managers, project resource managers, and of course, the ubiquitous user. Uh, the second type of account we have is the project allocation account, or just called a project. Uh, it's like a bank account that you use to pay for your resources that you use, the computing time and the, the amount of file storage that you use. Um, access to these resources are managed by the PI and optionally one of the project managers. Um, and all NERSC users belong to at least one project, um, but individuals may also belong to more than one project, uh, but you will have one of those projects designated as your default project. Now I'm going to pass this over to Michelle, and she's going to talk about user accounts. Hello, good morning, good afternoon. So uh, request a new account or reactivate an old account. New users can request a user, nurse user account through the Iris add user page with the link below. Users who want to reactivate an old account that is currently deactivated can use the same page, but select the I have a current NERSC account option. Account policies. All users must sign an acceptable use of policy form. This is incorporated into the self-service account request form with the link below. Password and policies, um, must change your password every year. Please do not share your password and please do not email your password. Um, you will be notified three times about the password change, two weeks before it expires, a week before it expires, and the day before it expires. Um, an account locked out after five consecutive login failures. Log into Iris to clear the login failures. Um, if, you, if you have forgotten your password, there's a link on the Iris login page that will lead you through the process of resetting the password. You can also email NERSC account support for more help. Password rules and requirements. The password must register as either safe or very safe on the password strength meter that is provided. There is no character complexity rule regarding inclusion of uppercase, lowercase letters, um, digits, or special characters. An example of a good password is below and a bad password. <laughs> if you're struggling to come up with a good password, Iris can also recommend one for you. Just um, click on the recommend a safe password link beneath the new password box in the password reset dialog window. Multi-factor authentication or MFA provides an additional security layer to accessing NERSC. Um, this is required for all users. Uh, it generates a soft token and a, one, um, a link to the one-time password or app software. Um, our online instructions is below. Okay, on the left is where you can find the add token button in Iris. And on the right, it will take you to the screen. Um, you can also scan this QR code that's blacked out for the Google Authenticator app. And you can also um, select the blacked out, it wouldn't be blacked out for you guys, but the Authy code um, for the Authy app. Iris is the web-based information portal. Um, web-based tool for users and project management. Uh, you can check your daily, daily balance, you can change your password, you can also change your login shell, update con 
uh, contact information, et cetera. Uh, manage project man memberships and allocations. You can also run reports. Um, this is the IRIS login screen. Pretty simple. Um, if you need any additional password help or username help or MFA help, just go ahead and click any of the links below and it, it should help you out there. Federated identity. NERSC offers a federated identity option that allows you to log in with your current organization's credentials. Um, it's currently only available for some national laboratories and uh, not available for universities yet. Um, the link is below and this is how the page looks. And I will go ahead and pass it on to Clayton who will elaborate more on allocations. Thank you, Michelle. Very welcome. Okay, the allocations process. So principal investigators apply for resources through the Energy Research Computing Allocations Process, lovingly known as ERCAP. It's accessed through the NERSC Help Desk system at a special URL, ercap.nurse.gov. Uh, it's used to renew current projects annually, uh, typically in late summer, like right now. Um, and the information we are requesting for projects are the science objectives, the approach, resources required, uh, such as computing time uh, and storage space on the community file system and archival file system or storage system. Uh, the requests are reviewed and awarded by the DOE Office of Science Programs. And most allocations are awarded in late fall, usually about mid-December. Uh, the new allocation year will start in January, about mid-January. Um, even though we do have uh, special um, submissions for renewals, we also accept um, uh, requests throughout the year for small exploratory allocations, um, and, but those, and those are also reviewed and awarded by DOE. So the computing time that we have available at NERSC for AY23, we've got approximately 19.7 million CPU node hours and 9.3 million GPU node hours. And as Rebecca mentioned earlier, those are kind of sliced and diced and um, proportioned out to different for different uses. So DOE Mission Science, uh, which is awarded by the DOE Office of Science, they get 80% of that. Uh, those hours. Uh, the Oscar Leadership Computing Challenge, ALCC, uh, they have, uh, they get 10% of those hours and they have their own um, submission uh, system uh, where they uh, ask for requests and they award them separately. And then we have 10% that we keep as a director's reserve. These are for like exploratory and education and staff usage. So a uh, little, another uh, pie chart of uh, the CPU time distribution for, these are the CPU node hours. Uh, so for DOE mission science, it's approximately 15.798 million CPU node hours. Uh, if you wanna get a better look at uh, this pie chart and uh, an explanation of, the, of how it's distributed, you can use that little bitly URL at the bottom. Uh, which is also good for this pie chart for the GPU time. Uh, so DOE Mission Science will get about 7.45 million GPU node hours for next year. Um, and if you are trying going to be using GPUs, uh, you need to check that your applications uh, will be work will are installed and can work on uh, the ProMutter GPU nodes. So you can run out of time in two ways. So uh, PI determines how much of a project's computing allocation each individual user gets. It's either a percentage of the total allocation or a fixed number of hours. If the user runs out of time, uh, they can still submit jobs that will go into overrun queue if the project is able to pay for the job. And the user will need to contact the PI to get an increase in their percentage or the number of hours if it, that time is available. However, if the project runs out of time, uh, the, PO, the PI will need to contact the DOE Office of Science Program Allocation Manager in order to get additional time for their project. 
Uh, each program typically holds a certain amount of time in reserve for these types of situations. And I believe that the job submitted will still run in the overrun queue, but at a very low priority. And someone could correct me if I'm wrong on that. And of course, we do provide a lot of online help. Um, these are some links for um, the ERCAP system, IRIS, for information on accounts and allocations, how usage is charged, um, our federated identity and MFA, et cetera. If you can't find uh, the information you're looking for online or just need some extra help, you can always uh, log on to the uh, nurse help desk at help.nurse.gov. And for uh, account support, uh, if you're having problems with accessing your account or setting your password or setting up your MFA, you can send an email to accounts at nurse.gov. Uh, for allocations having to do with anything having to do with the ERCAP system or um, problems with your allocations, you can send emails to allocations at nurse.gov. Uh, 